I, I want to read a poem by Dean called We Through Mist Descry from his book Skid. I think I chose this poem for a lot of reasons, some of which are probably not even known to me, but the one that is obvious to me is that it has the word descry in the title, which just might be the best word ever, but sadly neglected in our barbaric time. <laughs> we Through Mists Descry. So much energy. People buying watermelons, boarding airplanes, watching their parents die, and writing poems about it, while above throbs the celestial. I love how sadness turns celebratory, the childlike apocalyptic. Bees return to their hives, freighted with nectars. Shadows rise from the mud, flinging back their wet hair. And even though this seashell is very small, it's still singing about the void. Often great tension arises between sincerity and rhetoricity, imposing vague profundities. Outside, a man is failing to push start his car, albeit a very polished car. Remember how rash Apollo was even while inventing trigonometry? He did it to impress some skinny kid milking a goat, after all. Let's not forget the head in the furnace, how burning is laughing, and laughing is also crying out. When my father died, I saw his spirit snagged in a tree, a woman running across the parking lot, windows full of smoke. When my father died, his spirit snagged in a tree, then left behind its last body of plastic bags. I saw the sky ring its blue until it cracked and oils leaked out. I thought I was seeing everything and could turn off the white light with a switch. Satellite dishes in every yard, shiny, shiny stars. I'd like to be completely free, but I want everything to belong to me. You fall upon the thorns of life and bleed, and people think you're a fool. But later, at the cash bar, the disputants are transformed by the lips of their eyes, the sex organs of exhaled cigarette smoke. Even if it's only skin deep, once you derive the area, consider how the skin goes into the ears, behind the eyes, down the throat. That's an awful lot of beauty. Once someone told me I should live by water. Once someone sold me a surge protector for every room. The official story is that this is Dean's second heart, and I find that hard to believe. It seems to me, and I bet a lot of you suspect the same, that he grows a new heart with every book. So I want to read this poem in my new book, and it happens to be called Two Hearts. It all began to make sense when the doctors told me I had two hearts. One fatty and red, as frequently pictured, thumping its bloody, greasy way through the life I had chosen. Loving it, loving it all, loving it all to death. The other, ghastly and pale, a ghost orchid lurking in the fetid barrens. An interior field I'd cordoned off and walked wearily away from some years ago pining away for the lovers not chosen, the towns abandoned to biography, the apartment that I wandered past each day that might have been my home. At night, they wailed and groaned to each other like the last of their species, divided by oceans. Sometimes they were playful, flirting and frisking like puppies, but other days found them quiet, wary as prize fighters, each in its corner, nursing its private wounds. There was the year when one lived inside the other, but the larger heart had no windows. Its brother could not see out. When November came and the air turned stale, they told me they were separating. When it finally became intolerable, I asked the doctors to take one out. 
we'll have to abort it to remove it, they said. And without a thought, I answered, let it die. They let me see it after, slumped like a jellyfish on a tin serving dish. But it didn't take. In the long night, I can still feel it, now even more a ghost, tingling with each beat, this phantom heart that will not let go of its claim on life, its claim on my life. And though it has taken years, I have come to terms with it, this clock of flesh. And if, as they tell me, I love too much, I have learned to love loving too much. Learned to love the uncorrected rhythm of two hearts beating, each in its own time. Learned to love the too much of this longing life, the whispered I call, its mates I hear.